Hey guys, what's going on? It's Will Patterson here again with another Illustrator CC tutorial. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can texture your artwork with an Illustrator CC. As you can see on the screen here, I've got my hand lettering, which is Willing Mind Eager Heart. And this is just something I did for Instagram. But a lot of you guys asked how I textured it. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways of texturizing your artwork. One's a bit difficult, but it will be good for you to know. And the other one is a bit not expensive, but you have to buy it, which is probably the best option. So I'll take you through both of them. The first way, we need to go ahead and find a texture of the internet. I've just copied this one in. And this one is basically a half tone texture and it's at 300 DPI uh, or PPI even. And it is basically just a picture, a rastered image. It's not actually a piece of vector artwork, just a rastered image. What we need to do is we need to create a pattern out of this texture. So it needs to be kind of seamless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, go up to object, go down to pattern over here, press make. And we need to make sure this is seamless. So make sure there's no like odd lines. As for this, this looks pretty seamless to me. So I'm going to press OK up here once I get it. It's done. I'm going to get rid of this pattern now because in my swatches panel over here. Amazing. So the first thing I need to do is because it's in my swatches panel, I can highlight my artwork and go over here, click it, and it will turn all this into that pattern that I just created, which is the half tone pattern. Now, you're probably thinking this is really weird because it's not actually making vector artwork, but don't worry, stay with me and you'll understand what is going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this and we need to create uh, inner glow or a dark inner glow from the edges of here. And this is so that when in the end, the pattern won't actually come onto the edges. It'll only be in the center of our artwork, which is more of a letterpress style because the ink normally just passes through the center rather than on the edges. Hopefully you get what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. Then I'm going to go down to my appearance panel, which is down here. If you don't see that, go up to window, go over down to appearance and you'll find it. I'm going to bring this up here just so everyone can see it. What I want to do is highlight all my artwork that I'm going to be using for the texture. And then I'm going to go to effects panel in the appearance panel. And then I'm going to go over down to stylize and I'm going to go to inner glow. And this is going to give me a texture pattern here. I've got an, a mode of normal, a color of black, and I've got the opacity set to 90 and a blur set to five pixels and it's on the edge. I'm going to press OK. And what you can see is if I turn this off, that it makes the edges darker and it makes it look a bit more characteristic. Now, the great thing about the appearance panel is that we can actually change the values of these every time we need to. So I could just click over here on the inner glow part and change any of these values again. So this is a really good reason of having the appearance panel open. The next thing we need to do is add another effect. The other effect is effects. We're going to go down to distort and transform and go to roughen. Now this one's gonna roughen up the edges a little bit for us. We don't want too much. So if I preview this, it's gonna go crazy on us. But if I press absolute, go over to smooth, and then I'm gonna go down to two, then I'm gonna go from 10 to five, and then we're gonna go to two again, I think. Let's see what happens. That might be a bit too simple. So I'm gonna go to 30 for the detail. I'm gonna go to one for the size. I'm going to go up to 50 for the detail. I'm just playing around with it until we get a good sort of look at it. Maybe corner looks good. No, smooth looks better, doesn't it? This is going to give it a really rough look on the edges. And you can play around with this depending on what you want. So I'm going to press OK. Now you can see the edges are a bit rough. Now I want to change this because these edges are way too rough. So I'm going to highlight this and then go up to roughen again. And just change this a tiny little bit. So I'm going to go to size. Then I'm going to go to detail. I'm going to preview this. And it looks kind of mental, but it's okay. I'm going to go to 0.5 maybe. And then I'm going to go to 30 on here. And that looks good. So I'm going to press OK. And you can see there's a slight bit of roughing on the outside of this. If I get rid of it, you can see there is a bit of a roughing on the outside. Amazing. So the next thing we need to do is make a new art board. So I'm going to Go over here, make a new artboard. And the way that I did that was going to the artboards panel, which is over here for me, but up here in window, you will find it if you do not have it. So window down to artboards, which is just here. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to copy this over by holding Alt and dragging it. And we're going to make sure that we've got everything set and normal for this. Amazing. That looks great. What we need to do now is something that might seem very counterproductive. We need to rasterize this graphic here. And by that, I mean, we need to change it from a vector artwork into a JPEG image. So the way to do this is we're going to highlight this. Go up to Object and go down to Rasterize. And then it'll be in this dialog box here. Just press OK. It's going to have this little progress box up because it's rasterizing everything. And you can see that the background goes white. And that's exactly what we want at the minute. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to image trace this. Now over here, I've got image trace just here. You can find image trace in window and go down to image trace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to a preset that I use for a certain pack that a man called Ian Barnard does, who is an absolute legend in design and he sells products on Creative Market and he's just one of the most unbelievable hand letterers I've ever seen. So go and check him out and I'm going to put links to his products after this because he has got some amazing products. So after I've put these presets on or this preset here, you can see that it looks a bit more vectory. I'll zoom in and you can see that we've got this half tone look. And I really like that look. So what we're doing now is we've actually just traced back in from the JPEG image into Illustrator and we've confused Illustrator or made Illustrator believe that there are these white spots here. And that's how we get the texture all the way around looking so random and nice. But the values that you need to know, which you can create a preset on in the image trace window, is that the threshold needs to be at 50 and your advanced options need to be open. So threshold at 50, mode black and white, paths at 80%, corners at 0%, noise at 1%, create fills, no strokes, and then in the options have ignore white pressed on, so then the background gets disappeared. Now we just need to go ahead and expand this, and there's a couple of easy ways of expanding this. First off, we can highlight the image trace option, go to expand, and it will create the paths. The problem with this is that now Illustrator is going to slow down massively because the amount of paths are in our document here. And I'll show you why. Look, I'll zoom in, look at how many paths there are. This is all being deleted. All the white spots are actually bits of the black that have been deleted. So you've got actual texture in your artwork right there. So that looks really nice. Now then, there is that way of doing it, which is the hard and long way, or there is an easy way. I'm going to delete that for a second. Now the easy way, which is a lot better to do, is what I prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my libraries and bring this back in. And I'm going to show you the easy way. So this is my artwork here. I'm going to just scale this down a little bit. Now a man called Ian Barnard, who I just spoke to you a minute ago about, has this product on Creative Market, which you all need if you do this sort of thing. So I'm going to highlight this and show you. I'm going to go down to Appearance Palette and bring this here. I'm going to put this up. In my Graphic Styles, I've already downloaded it, so I'll just show you how I open it. I'm going to go to my Graphic Styles and I'm going to open the, another library. I'm going to go to my Creative Cloud Files, Creative Market Files. Go to Vector Press, and it's called Vector Press. And basically, what Vector Press does is it does exactly what I did there, but very quickly. So I'm going to open up these graphic styles, and a little box will pop up here. These are graphic styles where Ian has actually cultivated all these textures for us to use. So I'm going to highlight all this and group it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on a graphic style with this highlighted. I can click on any of them. I'm going to click on the one that we had before, which is, I think, this one. So we've got this graphic style here with all the same going on. So we've got the inner glow and everything happening there. So I'm going to highlight all this. And we're going to go to his actions that he gives you. He gets you to install some actions. So I'm going to go to Vector Press, Vectorize and play this. And it's going to vectorize that piece of artwork there. And then we wait for it. Go over to Image Trace, go down to his preset that he gives, and watch this. Boom. Expand. In like less than a half the time, we've actually done this 
just exactly the same. And look, it's even better. It's more accurate. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, the way that I texture all my artwork is either not doing it the way I did first. I mean, I learned different things, but um, it's mainly through this way is using Ian's texturing kits called Vector Press. And he's got another one called Pit Stop that has just recently come out. I just want to urge you to go and download them. They're very cheap. They're on Creative Market and the link is in the description. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.